Terraria is a great game that has stood the test of time for over a decade, but what happens when you throw a complete noob at it? Last time my friend Sketchy Joel here tried the game for the very first time, next to no progress was made, and it was solely focused on how someone doing a totally blind run of the game gets started. And now we're going to shift our focus to what happens when a noob starts to make progress. Unfortunately, for a large chunk of the first session uh, for this part, there was issue with lag, both our connections were strong, so I'm not sure what was going on. So if you notice some weirdness at the start with uh, my friend, that would be what's happening. When he first started, Joel here spent quite a lot of his time mining in random locations. I cannot explain why, and neither could he, and that didn't stop. He continued mining in the shallowest portions of the cave layer for quite a long time, searching for iron so he could make an iron uh, helmets and chest plate and what have you to replace his copper ones. This might speak more about a general misunderstanding of sandboxes or about Terraria in general, but he had a hard time finding ore and didn't think to go deeper. In fact, thinking of it, I wonder if this behavior could be blamed on Minecraft. That is the only sandbox I know he's played, and even then, he didn't play it much. But in Minecraft, mining for ores often involves digging blindly through layers of stone until you stumble across some ore. There is some cave exploration where you can find exposed ore, so maybe that's not the perfect explanation, but I suspect that behavior is impacting him here. Now, mining can be quite helpful in Terraria, but when you only ever mine in the highest levels of the caves, uh, there isn't a whole lot to find. I spent a whole hour just watching him mine in different areas. This did, at least, make him consider finding a way to stop the ectomist on the surface. There have been how I break down gravestones. I think they're causing his problems. Well, how, how do you think you break down gravestones? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mine it. Is that even doing it? There you oh, go. Okay. And I gotta say, it was quite nice cleaning up spawn, but watching him dig isn't the only tedious thing to watch because crafting takes just as long. I would spend some five or ten minutes watching him stand at a crafting bench, presumably seeing what he can make. Since I can't see his screen, I don't really know exactly what he's trying to do, but I suppose Terraria has a lot of recipes and reading to tool tips? Is that what they're called? Tool tips? <laughs> but, and they can be important for understanding the game. If you type, uh, if you go, if you hit enter, enter, go into the chat, type, uh, slash death, you can see how many times you've died. <laughs> D3. <laughs> we made no progress. <laughs> awesome. <That'll> <laughs> Invincible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this isn't Minecraft creative mode, bucko. <laughs> what did excite me was that the slime rain event happened. He was still lagging at this time, which isn't great, but I was super excited because Joel wanted to kill the slimes. Slime is falling from the sky. Why? <laughs> this, is, this is lovely. <laughs> All I want to do is build a castle at spawn. Now we have slimes falling from the sky. Well, maybe he wasn't motivated to kill them because, um, well, for any particular reason, but he's got some sort of motivation, which is all I need. So after many dead slimes, his very first boss spawned. Uh-oh. What? What the? Well, hello there. Oh my gosh. I was trying to place the banner. Say hello to your first boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's... We're, we're all teleporting because of lag, I can't even... <laughs> Unfortunately, some of the impact was lost due to the lag, making it hard for him to tell what was even going on. That really sucks, but he's also not a YouTuber, so I ain't getting no big reactions out of him, but I do love how the game introduced an event naturally, and this resulted in Joel finding his first boss without the need for prompting a wiki or anything else. No progression was made in the world, but progression was hopefully made in my friend's mind. We did end up getting a structure set up a spawn, and the second noob who progressed a bit faster than Joel joined for a time. I found Afro Zombie. What? I Wait. killed Afro Zombie. That one over there? <laughs> is that an Afro Zombie? No, there, I just killed an Afro Zombie. I had a blue Afro. Oh, those. Would never have thought of those zombies with the fishing bowls on their heads uh, as being afro zombies. After an hour and a half of this, Joel finally started heading deeper into the caves, and seeing noobs die to traps is just uh, therapeutic somehow. Oh. <laughs> what? 
Joel continued returning to this cave, but struggled a bit. Oh my gosh. Before finding his way just a little deeper. Black slimes were still a problem though, and I think his untrained eye often missed them. After those failures, he continued exploring a new cave, but this one didn't go nearly as deep, and he ended up in this same pattern of digging everywhere except for where he should. They found yet another cave because apparently the seeds got them all over the place, and it was the second noob, Scythe's turn to encounter a boulder trap. <laughs> boulder trap, yay. <laughs> They ended up finding a glowing mushroom, but instead of going for the treasure in the water, Joel started mining back up to where they were. The treasure was even good, but I guess the number of enemies down here would be intimidating for a noob, so it makes some sense, I guess, especially since Scythe did try and died for his trouble. Joel finally did find this treasure room he walked past earlier, but Scythe had already looted it, and I was strongly hinting to him that there was something he wanted in the treasure room. From the beginning, he's wanted a bed. So a loom would be quite helpful. He died before figuring it out, but on a return trip, he picked up the loom. Both noobs stood in this treasure room for a very long time before figuring out they could mine or pick up the crafting station, which I guess speaks to how someone who is unfamiliar with the game might not even think to mine these uh, non-block decorations that can be walked through. Blocks are a lot more intuitive, what with how they stop your movement, but if you can walk through something without any issue, then I can see why you might not give it a second thought. At this point, it's been a few hours and no real progress has been made. Joel has found no treasure, mine next to zero ore, and barely increased his max health. We did start a new session, and he seemed to be in a better mood now that the lag was gone. Hey, I'm bringing the slime to you, I think he wants to be your friend. No, I don't like having friends. I like being lonely. We started a very long process of actually finding ore and heart crystals, and this one glowing mushroom had a functioning jellyfish and bat statue in it, which is just mean, so I blew them up so Joel wouldn't get bullied. He died to fall damage anyways, and this death reset his mind to its old habits. But you can't guess where I'm going. Uh, <laughs> mine dirt. <laughs> Absolutely. He didn't end up doing that, and this time ventured beyond the tunnel he'd grown accustomed to into the corruption. He didn't really react to the new surroundings at all, but he did immediately fall down one of the chasms, landing on a precarious perch where he quickly found himself incapable of mining Evanstone. To my surprise, after him not being curious about exploring different caves, he actually wanted to jump down and see what was in the corrupt caverns. He was just knocked off of the rope before he could do anything and splattered on the bottom of the chasm. He returned to the corruption and managed to get to the bottom this time, only he was stopped short by the ebon stone in our way. He tried another chasm, but this one also didn't bring us to the bottom, and we were killed by the Eaters of Souls. That is a lot of them. Oh well. no! He more or less gave up on the corruption for the time being and spent quite a long time digging out a large open space where he was going to set up shop. I'm actually impressed by how he laid this whole thing out. I'm just wondering if he'll figure out NPC housing. He did make a bed, which he's been wanting for the longest time, but it doesn't work because it's natural dirt wall, not man-made walls. Another friend happened to jump on the call and he knows a bit more about the game and he was trying to help Joel and ended up suggesting he make a table, which gets us a lot closer to NPC housing. Kind of a spoiler, but at the same time, this is quite the unfortunate circumstance. This is an open question I have for you. When you first played Terraria, where did you make your base? I struggle to remember my early days, but I do know I built many underground bases in my day. Something about mining out a space feels more secure and more your own than slapping down some blocks on the surface. The problem with making a base underground, though, is that none of the natural walls are connected to the open air, or at the very least, walls cannot be placed here. How is the new player, then, to figure out how to fix this problem, assuming they do make a base underground? And before solving that riddle, they first have to figure out they need walls in the first place. When you look at a box with no walls, it doesn't quite feel right. But with the average noob, think of filling in this space when there is dirt wall. If you're on the surface, you just see the backdrop. And that doesn't feel natural, but with dirt wall here, why wouldn't it feel natural? Especially when the bed gives no indication as to why you can't set spawn point here. 
A hint could be found by figuring out if it's valid housing, but as we've previously discussed, finding that button isn't exactly intuitive. In the end, I decided to teach my friend how walls function and helped him place walls throughout the base, which is something he wanted to do. And now he's got a torch and a bed in a room, missing only a table. He's so close to NPC housing and even had that table in there earlier. It is so frustrating. He was so close, so close, but he removed the table. How is he going to know how to even do this though? Or even to know that there's something wrong in the first place. But now comes the part that's a little more unfortunate. See, we took a break after uh, the house and some exploring and we hopped onto the world uh, another time. What have you <laughs> been doing? You got all the things! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Herbie's boots? Is that a shark tooth necklace? A sapphire? Holy cow! We just... We st <laughs> we <laughs> have, have you beaten any bosses? We're not gonna talk about that. Have, what bosses have you beat? None. Are you sure? Oh no, uh, 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 the eyeball guy. So apparently, Joel has been doing stuff on his own world. After my probing, it would seem that everything we see on him is just about everything he's done. Mostly the grinding and finding treasure. He's not at full health. He killed the eye on his own world, which was likely on classic difficulty, while this one is on expert. And he hasn't explored any biomes outside of the ones we've already seen on this world. Kinda sad missing him beat his first boss, but he's my friend and I can't force him to uh, be my guinea pig for YouTube. I'm going to choke you out, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> now I actually have to make a bit more progress as I'm quite a bit weaker than Joel now. I'm just going to make all of this equipment and him playing the game on his own, I'll just take that as a sign that he's starting to enjoy himself, so it's a win. Exploring was definitely a bit smoother now, what with him having much better gear. I did find an Abigail's flower near spawn, and I need the progression now, so I snagged it and Joel kept begging for me to tell him how I got it. So about your ghost. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what about her? I'll never tell. And he has seen Abigail before, so this isn't a spoiler or anything. And I need the gear progression anyways. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> nice. Thanks for mining all the ore for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. We went left for the first time and he laid eyes on the tundra for the first time. This is interesting. He tried mining and exploring a thing here, but then the slime rain event interrupted us. This is his second time encountering this event, so he knows what's going on. King Slime ended up spawning at the same time as we found the dungeon. Joel got stuck in a pit with some slimes while the boss followed me. I fought him for a second, but then realized I should stop killing the boss for my friend and brought it back to my newbie uh, friend, uh, who was still stuck in a hole. I'm such a good friend. He did get out of the hole, but was squashed. But he has seen the dungeon now, and so he returned and spoke to the old man. Two other friends familiar with the game joined the call, and one of them was no fun trying to warn Joel. I'm not sure how it impacted his uh, actions, but Joel has the foresight to create a house with a bed. Noting that it took a long time to get out here, and he suspected that whatever might happen next, he would likely die. Which I gotta say, might have been the smartest decision he's made uh, this entire time he's been playing Terraria. I also asked him what happened when he spoke to the old man, and he said that he saw the curse option. By the time the house was finished though, it was day, and so the curse was gone. So instead, Joel figured he'd see what's inside the dungeon. We actually got quite deep into the dungeon, deep enough to find the first chest before the guardians appeared. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> he returned to the treasure, but thought it was all basically useless. I pointed out that he got a gold key and said that it would be useful, but gave him no other information other than that. Having learned his lesson, he decided to go deeper into the dungeon, and this has got to be like the farthest I've ever seen someone get into the dungeon pre-Skeletron. All right, we're trying it again. Let's yeah, let's just do it again. Let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna send you first. <laughs> that's not what I meant. What are what are you trying to like? Well, what are you trying to accomplish right now? That's my that's my Everything question. can be beat. Everything can be beat. Fair enough. Fair enough. See, Joel loves Dark Souls, so I'm thinking when he sees an unkillable enemy, he naturally desires to kill it. But I'm fairly certain he won't figure out how to kill a dungeon guardian. <laughs> What's a little bit of sharing a bed between bros? Come night, he spoke to the old man again. What do you think is going to happen when you hit curse? Nothing good. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah that's about right. <laughs> he didn't last very long, and I tried to survive long enough for him to uh, respawn, but we are very much undergeared and have no arena to speak of. He gave it several more attempts, and I can't help but think this is odd. Skeletron is more or less the fourth boss of the game. Two of the bosses before him spawn naturally, one upon reaching a milestone you'd come to so long as you explore, and the other if a certain event occurs and you kill enough slime. The eye is a bit more useful, what with the evil ore it drops, but I mention all of this because I am wondering why Skeletron is perhaps the easiest boss to notice and summon. My friend sees this boss and thinks that it must be beat or else the Dark Souls in his brain is telling him to overcome every obstacle the moment he encounters it. But I can't help but wonder about the evil biome bosses. How are you supposed to discover their existence? Who would even consider destroying the orbs or hearts? Would they even learn how to throw explosives to destroy the Ebonstone? And if I'm not mistaken, an evil biome pickaxe needs to be acquired to mine Ebonstone. Maybe it's just platinum? I forget. But it's a bit along. Would a new player even consider that a block that cannot be mined can, well, be exploded? Or would they think that maybe they just need a platinum pickaxe? Assuming, again, that's the one they need. How do I not remember this? Joel here hasn't hardly even touched the corruption, though. And he's stuck on Skeletron because Skeletron is obvious. He's right there. While the Eater of Worlds isn't even a concept in his mind. Skeletron could technically be beat with our current gear. Though even a Terraria veteran like me is going to struggle with well, our current loadouts. But Joel actually thought of a rather interesting strategy using minecarts. I, I, I honestly have no idea how this will go. <laughs> it would seem he hasn't thought of placing platforms to create an arena. And I can see why he'd use minecarts instead. They're simple. He ended up changing the design, which I think is very smart. We summoned Skeletron and died soon after. He wanted to keep trying though, so we kept on summoning Skeletron, mounting these minecarts and ramming them into Skeletron's spinning head until we died. And that's where we ended a session and took a break for a little bit once again before returning. And I could hardly believe what I saw when he joined the world. Oh my goodness, he's got Demonite on. And he looted the dungeon. <laughs> he, he, okay, okay. Well... That's a bit unfortunate. Here, I went into these videos, I guess this is just the second one, thinking it'll be a whole series doing a deep dive into how a totally new person would interact with Terraria without the use of the wiki and minimal guidance at best. And, well, two times now my friend took the time between sessions to make all kinds of progression unsupervised. Perhaps it's not the best for content's sake, but, you know, one of the reasons for introducing him to Terraria in the first place was to see if a gamer today could get into Terraria. The game has become full of so much stuff, and there isn't really a whole lot of guidance, so I thought it might be a bit intimidating, and the first hour or so definitely were a bit rough. But if my friend, who wasn't really excited about playing this game in the first place, has been playing it on his own time, then I guess that answers the question I was asking. A new person can enjoy Terraria. Now we just got to wrap things up and see how he handles something like the wall. Oh, I also asked him how he ended up killing Skeletron. Turns out he made a circular minecart track. A guardian killer. Literally a guardian killer to beat Skeletron. This noob made a guardian killer without even knowing it. I ended up leaving so I could get myself geared up to his level, perhaps a little overly powered with an accessory or two, but I was just trying to be quick. I can't explain why, but he started mining straight down and I joined him. I did ask if he was aware of what was at the bottom of the world, and he did say he found the bad place, but that he hadn't really explored it. So with a little prompting, because at this point there's not really a reason to not at least push him a little bit, we created a elevator, or at least most of one. While we mined, I did ask if he was using the wiki at all, and he basically said he looked up how to craft things, but other than that, he didn't generally look at the wiki. I asked why he didn't use the guide, and he was surprised that the guide was even a thing. He apparently had figured out how to make suitable housing for NPCs on his own world, but didn't bother talking with the guide at all, which I guess isn't really that abnormal. He also mentioned a few issues with the dungeon. Well, he said that he came to a point where he knew that there was more dungeon somewhere behind some walls, but that the blocks prevented him from exploring. I also asked him if he had a blue shield and a sword, and he wasn't sure what those were, so we made a stop in the dungeon. He didn't really figure out how the crumbling blocks worked despite running into the trap several times. I think he saw the falling block traps and figured that was it, that they were just traps, and it didn't occur to him 
to try and search out these kinds of blocks to clear out tunnels. And after spending a very long time in the dungeon together, he saw the sword and shield and said he did actually know what those were. He may have made all this progress, but he still has no idea what anything is. I even asked him what accessories he had, and he said boots that make him run fast, and a cape that makes him look edgy, and nothing else. Well, at least that he mentioned. I know he has more accessories, but he... I, I, I don't know. I fished for more information, but I swear this guy doesn't know what an accessory is, where they are kept, or even the abilities that the ones he has equipped even do. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. But we returned to the underworld, and I learned that he did not, in fact, have the horseshoe. Oh. When he managed to survive the landing, he ended up sticking around the space right beneath the elevator for quite a while before finally moving on. Look out, there's a demon over there. My jaw dropped. The guide isn't around. We don't have suitable houses anywhere on this world. The wall can't actually spawn even if we wanted him to. I was so very disappointed. My friend doesn't even know there is a boss down here. I was waiting with bated breath for the surprise. This cannot be allowed to stand. So I set up houses at spawn, telling my friend they'll just be real nice to have around. By the sounds of it, he already figured this out. So I'm not helping him. I'm just getting this world up to snuff since he spent most of his time progressing on a different world. What I did tell him was to drink a gravitation potion I found, and off we went to the skies with a lovely little island hanging around just above spawn. And now this is something that annoys the heck out of me with every person I have ever introduced to the game. What do you get? Uh, I got a painting, I got another angel statue, because I got plenty of those back by the place. Uh huh, and? And I, I, got, I got some potions. What was the special thing? <laughs> I didn't see a Me. special thing. There is a special thing in there. Why? Just why? Is it that every new person I have ever brought into this game, when I ask them what is in the treasure chest, why do they always seem to read them off from right to left? They almost never even notice the special item, or at least can figure out how to read. They see potions, rope, Torches, paintings, but for the love of God, why is it that all the new people don't think to talk about the one thing on the top left, the place where your eyes should go to first and think to mention that item, or at least look at it, <laughs> considering how it's a little different from the others? I don't get it. Okay, rant over. Uh, <laughs> but we did get him a horseshoe, and I put clouds at the bottom in case he was lying about getting that horseshoe. Back to the underworld. Oh, look. A treasure chest. What do you do? Walk away. Loot it. Do you have any gamer instincts at all? No, I don't. <laughs> Where's the chest? The thing that looks distinctly like a chest. Oh, that one. That's something more unique with this friend of mine. He does not understand treasure chests somehow, and I blame him for that. Not noobs in general, nor the game design. He just... I, I, I don't know. As we winded down, I figured I'd show him the wonders of planter boxes that are immune to lava, apparently. Thank you, uh, those in the comments, for bringing that to my attention. My friend shares that he beat the Old One's army, which has me shocked beyond all belief. This guy, this friend of mine, could find, let alone beat the Old One's army, even just first phase? How? He doesn't even have enough instinct to make a bridge or mine more than five hellstone. He, you, you guys, you, you know, you know, how? He did mine hellstone though, mind you, but uh, let's just say he was struggling. I did get him a hellforge, figuring that he wouldn't figure it out on his own, and indeed, he sure wouldn't have. Took him a second to realize he needed obsidian, and when he did, he dared to ask how one gets obsidian. He's played Minecraft, he should know this, though I guess he didn't play a lot of Minecraft, so, so maybe this is permissible. He did, however, get his hands on a voodoo doll, and without me prompting him, decided he would try to use the doll to hurt the guide. But he figured that you could do damage to the doll using any old weapon. And so he threw the voodoo doll down a pit and tossed a grenade at it. 
<laughs> Try too far away. Try over <laughs> You try. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, throw Vincent out of the way. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be violent. Oh. Nice, nice try! <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice try! I appreciate the effort. <laughs> 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 After fighting the goblins, he threw the doll into the lava and killed the guide. Of course, because we're on the surface, this did nothing but kill the guide. I tried so hard to convince him to throw it into the lava in the underworld without spelling it out for him, but he knew the doll would likely kill the guide and wanted to, quote, do it face to face. <laughs> Why? I'm disappointed. The guide didn't suffer in Paris like I thought he would. I kept telling him we should go to the underworld though, and that there is something down there needed for progression. A wizard hat? Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Eventually, I convinced him to try to cast the doll into the fire. Yay. Oh my, oh. I know. I know. There's a reason my friend's not a YouTuber. I'm glad this happened. <laughs> I bet. Oh, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being consumed. You oh, well. did so well, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with my friend and Terraria is the fact that he loves Dark Souls, and so when he sees a boss fight, he sees something that should be killed right here now. Uh, so he became fixated on taking this thing down without changing anything, so of course he died. I told him which of his weapons were most likely to be effective, mine some Hellstone gear for myself to better support him, and continue making a bridge as he did uh, I don't even know what. I was feeling pretty certain he couldn't kill the wall with his current loadout, but to my surprise, we were able to kill the thing on the third attempt. Did I help him quite a bit in achieving that? Yes, but in the end, I have come away with this quite happy. I've learned a few things about how new players would approach Terraria, and many of the difficulties that they would encounter, and best yet, he played Terraria on his own time, when I wasn't forcing him to at gunpoint. So. Although I'm disappointed I didn't get to go into a deep dive about the everyday decisions and struggles of the newbie like I really wanted to for these videos, I know my friend at least enjoys Terraria, and that's enough for me.